Hi everyone, welcome to SFSR channel. In this video, we will be going through web services description language or Vistel. Yeah, again, Vistel stands for web services description language. It is written in XML and it's, it basically describes a web service, more specifically, a SOAP web service. So, systems will be communicating between each other using SOAP protocol, and a Vistel file will basically expose what services and methods are available in that uh, integration or a service, and uh, at what location the service can be accessed. All these details. A Vistel file has a number of sections. Uh, we will go through each section in detail uh, but before we go there uh, just keep this diagram in your mind there are two types of Vistels uh, Vistel 1.1 which was an earlier standard and later Vistel 2.0 came but still a lot of Vistel documents are following old 1.1 style uh, so if you see here uh, under 1.1 section uh, you can see at a very high level these two are categorized into abstract section and a concrete section abstract section defines the things that are needed for the whistle to make sense uh, basically different data types and uh, different message bodies and at the end in the concrete section it exposes the bindings and services so that an external system can consume it we'll go through an actual example of a whistle file uh, but before that just a keep these terms in memory uh, these are the different sections in Vistel basically types message uh, different port types bindings and services yeah let's let's go through an example Vistel file uh, but before we go to the actual Vistel file uh, in case if you have any doubts about Vistel in future uh, probably you can uh, refer w3 consortium's website so Vistel is a W3 consortium or a worldwide web consortium is a body that standardizes these Vistel files and uh, this particular link will list all the different types of Vistel examples of what is meant by each section uh, it, it's a very detailed uh, explanation of every section in a Vistel and uh, for the sake of example in this uh, demo we'll be taking the example of a temperature conversion whistle file from w3 school so you can find this file by going to this url and uh, clicking service description so i have the same file loaded here so this is the same file and this will help you match on this will help you identify what each of those sections mean so let, let me pull up some of these sections so in the example or in the slide you saw that uh, there is a types messages port types bindings and services so you can find the same sections here types then messages then port type inside that there are operations uh, with different inputs and outputs and then there are bindings and then uh, there can be more than one binding in an actual list uh, and then these bindings will be used inside a service and inside a service there are ports again so this is the concrete section of the list and the section above this is the abstract section uh, but before we drill down into each of these sections uh, you, you may be wondering why there is this whistle prefix so this is because these uh, schema types are coming from the whistle schema definition so this is stands for XML namespace whistle uh, that's why uh, this is these are prefixed with whistle uh, if we make this as the default namespace say like this uh, then you will be able to define this as just a message if you want uh, but all, all, only one section can be uh, so so a whistle file might be taking definitions from multiple uh, schema definitions so in in our case to make it more explicit uh, we, are, we are keeping the whistle extension here and here so yeah again to cover each section individually uh, the very top section is the type so here we define complex uh, schema types there are some sim simple schema types that come directly from this xml schema but you might have your application specific schema types those are available those you define under this, this type section 
so he, in in our case we are uh, defining two different uh, not two we are defining four different types and then we are specifying the xml uh, default uh, string type also so these are our complex types and these are these are more like objects in salesforce or javascript uh, and you can have different sections so this is basically an object called the uh, fire and heat celsius and that has a fire and heat uh, string uh, variable inside it so it's more like a, a complex data type so similarly there are multiple complex data types that are defined here and then the next section is messages so these messages will be using the uh, using the types that you defined above so the some of these complex data types that you have defined here uh, will be used by will will be used by uh, these messages and then once the message section is over you have port type section so this is where you define different operations so this basically says that there is a fire and heat to celsius conversion operation here and uh, the input expected to this uh, this operation is a message of this type that is defined here under messages and the output that is coming from this uh, operation will be defined ag again here as a different message so this defines different uh, operations under different port types and then and uh, after that there will be a binding section in this binding section you will again have operations uh, but but this time it will have more details like you uh, at what endpoint this operation can be executed so if we collapse this binding section you, you can see there are three different binding types right so it basically says that the first binding section says that uh, this corresponds to uh, this this port type uh, temperature convert so and it, it has uh, it is using HTTP binding and uh, so another one thing with the Vistel or a SOAP protocol is it can be communicated over uh, SMTP and FTP and other similar protocols so here we are saying that uh, this is supported over HTTP and then there is the operation that is supported as part of this so this is uh, this has uh, one operation that is for a fire and heat to celsius conversion and uh, the types how the data will be sent and then another one section for celsius to fahrenheit similarly there are multiple bindings in our case so there are two types of soap protocol there is soap 1.1 and there is soap 1.2 so this soap 1.2 is added to support the soap 1.2 protocol and uh, for, uh, for in this example there is an http binding also uh, but again if you are talking in salesforce context uh, only one binding is supported so you will have to uh, remove these bindings if you are going to remove uh, these two bindings if you are going to use it in salesforce then in the last and final section in the concrete uh, section you will be specifying uh, again a service and uh, what ports are exposed as part of this so in this case uh, in, in this case again if you are using in salesforce you will be getting rid of these two sections and you will need only one binding so only one port so that's at a high level a vistel sections uh, so these are the sections at the type type is basically all the complex data types and messages are different payloads that uh, go in and out and then operations will have will specify the different operations that are part of the integration or, or the web service and uh, it will have specifications uh, for uh, diff what is the format of input and output and it will be pointing back to the message and then at the end uh, there will be binding uh, which will be grouping of this uh, port types specifying or what protocol this integrations will be working uh, and at the end uh, there will be a concrete section of service uh, which point which has a port again pointing to the binding Thank you for watching the video, hope you guys liked it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel.